Salvete omnes. The third declension nouns are pretty complicated, so let's review what we learned about them. In the last lesson's story, we had the sentence Felis murem widet et mus felem spectat. For almost all third declension nouns, they always end in em when serving as the object. We can see this also in the next sentence. Miles feli carnem dat. This sentence also shows the dative case, or the recipient, which is indicated with an E ending. And as was mentioned in the last lesson, this ending indicates a different case than the same ending on second declension nouns. Thankfully, the genitive case is different, as we can see in the next sentence. Felis hibum muris edit. The cat eats the mouse's food. The word kibum means food. It might help to think of the word kibble, the hard dog and cat food, in order to remember this word. And looking at the ending, what declension is it? Second, which means the nominative form is kibus. Let's compare the three declensions. Thankfully, there are not too many repeated endings, but regrettably, it's the two most complicated cases, the genitive and the dative, that contain the overlap. And this list doesn't include plurals, which contain more repeated endings. For this reason, it's better to slowly introduce the declensions rather than try to memorize tables when studying Latin. And it gets worse when we add pronouns, because these have their own pattern. Look at the next sentence. Dominus mihi kibum dat. The first word obviously has a connection with dominate and has meanings like master or lord. And you may have guessed that the second word is the pronoun meaning to me. So this sentence means the master gives food to me. And this sentence? Tibi librum do. I give the book to you. They're only connected by one letter, but tibi is the dative form of to. Do you remember the second word in this sentence? Servus meus es. From the word servus, we derive the word servant, but in Latin, it can also have the meaning of slave. So this sentence means, you are my slave. Kind of scary. And there's also a poem by William Butler Yeats, titled, Ego Dominus Tuus. I am your Lord, or I am your master. And what's another way we could say this? Dominus tuus sum. Try to say now, I am not your slave. Non servus tuus sum. The English verb laud, as in to praise, comes directly from the Latin word laudare. So say now, the master praises the slave. Dominus servum laudat. The word rarely is raro in Latin. Say now with all male forms, the teachers rarely praise the student. Magistri discipulum raro laudant. And say, I rarely praise you. Tibi raro laudo. And try to say now, the soldier rarely gives the cat food. Miles feli raro kibum dat. To understand the next sentence, recall that when you are enamored, you are in love. Linguam Latinum Amo I love the Latin language, or just Latin. And you understand lingua, right? We use this word in bilingual and lingua franca. Let's make it plural now. Poeta linguas amat. The poet loves languages. 
Pretty convenient that the plural involves an S, right? Note also that the A became long because the nominative case is just lingua. Recall that in the story we had mus felem spectat. And try to guess now how to ask, do you love cats? Pelesne amas? Did you remember the N-E? For second declension nouns, the vowel changes. We have magistra discipulos laudat. The female teacher praises the students. Say now, the female student loves books. Discipula libros amat. Let's pause for a moment to take this in. When a noun serves as the object of the verb, or is in the accusative case, it ends in an M when it's singular and an S when it's plural, for all five declensions. There are a few exceptions, but that makes it so much easier to decipher Latin, doesn't it? If only the other cases were so easy. The next new word we'll need for the story, but it's also really convenient. It's the way to say don't. Noli aquam bibere. Don't drink the water. Notice that the verb is in the infinitive form when we use the word noli, but that makes sense, right? Because there isn't really a subject in this sentence. For the next sentence, recall that in order to say my, we use me plus the appropriate ending for that noun. Try to say, don't read my letters. Noli epistolas meas legere. But remember that the adjective declines according to the gender of the noun, so they don't always match. For example, cat is feminine in Latin, so we have omnes feles meas amat. Everyone loves my cats. Another word that will be in the story is at the end of this sentence. Noli kibum meum edere mus clamat. Did you guess the meaning? Don't eat my food, the mouse exclaims. It's like making a clamor with your voice, so it can mean exclaim, scream, cry out, etc. And we will also see edere in various forms throughout the story, so remember its meaning. Let's go! Noli fagare, felis clamat, amicum walo. Felis et mus, amici non sunt, clamat mus. Quod feles mures edunt. Non mures edo, quod dominus mihi cibum dat, dicit feles. Non mures edis, rogat mus. Ita est, dicit feles. Sumus ne amici? Ita est, dicit mus. There was one word we hadn't learned yet, but I'm sure you guessed that rogat means asks. It has roots in interrogate, but you'll pick up this word really easily, as we'll see it more in the coming lessons. There's a PDF with an English translation as well as a downloadable audio version of each of the stories available on Patreon. There's a link in the description box below. You can also find a PDF containing all the example sentences used in the lessons with their English translations. Thanks for watching!